I didn't work. Okay. <clears throat> okay, it is 11.45. We'll call a special meeting to order and dispense with all the pleasantries. And uh, first we'll get an update from the emergency services director, Mr. Fred. Um, so as far as an update, uh, today there's 398 cases in the state of Minnesota. Um, 180 of those are no longer requiring isolation out of the total of just over 14,000 tests done. Um, the death toll has raised to four, with 34 still currently hospitalized. Um, still only five cases in Stearns County, and now we do have one in Candy, Ohio County. Um, did an inventory of our N95 mask. Um, the other day we have about 457 here in the city still. Um, we did take three cases and take them and donate them to the hospital just for the fact that we felt that the 457 should get us by for a while. Um, also at the police department, we have a total of 10 3M respirators where you can put the canisters on the side that provide a little bit better filtration. Um, four of those, we have one in each squad car right now and then we still have six in the back. Uh, still working on the plan update to get the pandemic in there. I got uh, Wake Park's plan, Sartell's plan, and Benton County's plan. I'm meeting with Centric Care today at 1 p.m. with Jeff Booth to get their plan so we can kind of work together and get the Painesville plan up and running. IDs, we are still working on the IDs. Uh, the company that made our IDs in the past has closed. <laughs> so looking online, it was an average of about 10 to 12 bucks for each ID. Uh, I think we're up to 13 or 14 people needing IDs yet. So we started looking at it and we ended up uh, purchasing our own ID machine. Uh, then we can do them in-house. The day the employee starts, we can get them up to them right away. Um, that was about $998. So each, I don't know what you call it, Belinda, but each cost center or each department within the city basically got charged $99 and they get their first 30 IDs. So, in the long run, it'll save us some money there. Um, and then we're just waiting for some new social distancing guidelines coming from the Trump administrator administration later on today. Um, sounds like that's going to be some less restrictive in certain areas and more restrictive in other areas. So, that'll be interesting when that comes up. Um, and then me and Belinda had a conversation and. Kind of spoke to Paul about it today about using code red during this pandemic. We're going to kind of limit on what type of messages we're sending out. I know there was a conversation, you know, me and Belinda had that conversation yesterday about sending out a message about water bills saying, hey, we're pushing back the due date. Um, my feeling on that is if we start flooding the system with messages on water bills or, you know, well, most people don't necessarily consider it an emergency. You know, we're starting to roll into severe weather season. And if we actually have to get a message out there, I don't want people just becoming immune to that. Oh, it's just another message from the city. I don't need to pay attention to it. So we're going to kind of watch you know, what messages we're going to send out using that system. So that's about it. Okay. So in probably all messages should go through you or Belinda or Ron. Yep. Yeah. So I, I guess that's my feeling on it because, I mean, how often do we get those text messages that we just – Okay, yep, my water bill doesn't have to be paid now, and then the next message might be, hey, we have a gas line leak, we need to evacuate that section of the neighborhood. Ah, it's just something from the city about the coronavirus. So we'll use all of our other platforms, and if it's something major about the coronavirus, then we'll get it. Okay. Can I ask two questions? Yep. Okay, um, first was about the 10 ventilators that you said the police department has. Respirators. Res sorry, respirators. Um, how many of those are like, are there components of those that are, you can disinfect and reuse yep. or are those? They can be disinfected. You just change out the filters after so many hours of use. Okay. Um, and then my other question is like with the governor's directive about staying home for these next two weeks, what are, are there consequences for people if they're out and about? Like are the police authorized to pull them over or what is that? I'll let him handle that. Okay. <laughs> So with the directive, um, anybody that is in violation of that, it is a misdemeanor violation. Um, from the police department standpoint, we will be doing a lot of educating for those that are in violation of that. 
Uh, just because somebody's out doesn't give us the right to stop you and ask why you're out. Um, you know, uh, like any situation, you know, officers will be encur encouraged to use their discretion as to, you know, if we see a group of kids down at the park playing, you know, playing on the equipment, doing whatever, that would be a violation of the order. We would discuss it with them and express the importance of staying home or, you know, uh, following those orders. Um, hopefully just the education piece will be enough to get people to comply versus having to go to that point. Okay. Thanks. Um, one other thing with that, if somebody is, you know, in violation, they refute, flat out refuse, uh, at that point it will be going, the case is just like anything else will be going over to the city attorney for charges because uh, we don't have the means of charging that out within our system. So. Okay. Tom, assuming that the Trump administration releases some social distancing guidelines that are more relaxed than the state of Minnesota's, is it your suggestion that we follow the stricter of the two, or? I thought the state can overrule the Trump. It can be more restrictive, but not less. Yeah, I think it can be more restrictive, but not less restrictive. Mm -hmm. um, I, I meant, are we gonna follow the more restrictive guidelines? Personally, I would say yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the way I look at it. I mean, we don't have any confirmed cases in Painesville, and let's try to keep it that way. Mm -hmm. You know, and try to keep that spread down. Um, I think that's something we'll have to address once we see what they are okay. and what actually comes out with that. Okay, and I did get a phone call from Brandon Nord at Center Care thanking the city for those masks, so they're appreciative. I did as well. Yeah. Okay, all right, then. Um, uh, Neil has a I'll, question. I'll, Neil, yeah. If a case came up at our hospital or our city, would that be a code red? I think it probably should be. I think we're going to have to be very careful with that mm -hmm. because that might, we are a small community and I guess what I'd be afraid of is if people found out we were sending out messages about their medical, mm -hmm. how, you know, that might be a violation of the HIPAA. Um, I think we're walking a very fine line there. Um, I don't feel that would be an appropriate use of the code red. Um, it's it's a tough call. It, it, it's going to be a very tough. If call. I knew that we had somebody that tested positive in this town, I may change the way I approach things. <laughs> along with everybody else. I, I, think, I, think, I think the thing that you see right now is the vast majority of those people who are identified are being identified by their county, mm -hmm. not specifically by their city. Uh, I understand the reasonings behind you know, wanting to do that. Maybe it would help people to follow those orders maybe a little bit better. But I agree with Tom. I think we run a real fine line of, you know, crossing that line where government shouldn't be getting into some of those things um you know i think i would probably leave it up to the papers and up to the medical profession to if, if they're putting that information out about the exact location to leave it with them the stearns county will probably could probably say something like they did in the one in sartell so we shouldn't really get involved in it no right mm -mm. And as far as how we're acting, we have so much community spread at this point, I think we should just assume there are a handful of cases in town already. Yeah. By the time they're confirmed, you might have already been exposed. Is well, yeah, that's true. Is you know, to be, <clears throat> Does I don't know how much more vigilant you can be under the conditions, but you know, we should all be as vigilant as we, we can be, regardless of where, you know, the Stearns County ones and the Canyon County ones have have been and there are certain protocol that's followed um, because if they are if they do discover someone or diagnose someone they backtrack as to where that person has has been does our hospital have the capacity to isolate and treat if there were cases that today that was okay. We think there's two ICU beds in Painesville, but we're not quite sure. Mm -hmm. um, so that's going to be my conversation with him at one today. Um, you know, I actually know that answer. Um, 
think they actually do have a ICU, well, I'm not sure if it's an ICU, but uh, Tammy Sager did tell me that they have a isolation of the whole in their emergency room. And I don't know what their ICU capacity is, but I believe they have the, the tent or whatever, so if they knew that somebody was coming in with it, they would put them in that, that um, mm -hmm. I don't know if I remember the <laughs> language. Okay. So they have one of those in emergency, and I don't know how many ICU beds they have. Okay, thanks. I know Fairview Health opened up this first coronavirus hospital today. It's basically just taking coronavirus the way I understood it from the news article. Um, and then it was Chippewa County, Swift County, and Lackawanna County are working on opening up the old prison in Appleton as a coronavirus hospital, starting off with 11 beds with potential for up to 77 <coughs> ICU beds there. So. Very dynamic, I guess you Okay, thank you very much. Then up to item A, since we're updated now, um, the discussion on essential employees, and I think uh, Bill has been looking at some of this, Belinda has kind of been looking into some of this, and... And I, I know, you know, in, in Governor Walls's presentation the other day he said it's not necessary to have IDs but the, the guidance from the league was that it was a good practice to try to define who your essential employees are and give them some kind of a letter so they have it just so there's no issues um, and so I had just uh, kind of taken that league guidance and prepared a, a, a draft of a letter um, where the city could identify who their essential employees are maybe it's everybody in the city's view I don't know but um, but that was the, the guidance and, and the discussion, you know, that the people around the league were having was just because, uh, you know, public works, for example, is labeled as uh, as essential under the, under the broad terms of the governor's edict. If you looked at the attached appendix, maybe not everybody in public works had to be so identified. And, Maybe they're going in a little more detail. We have a small department. We prob probably everybody does a little bit of everything, so it's probably necessary. But I, I just pointed point that out that, that that was the kind of the the gist of the discussion among league people was to to just think about it and and, and provide those letters to the people that are essential and and maybe like I said, maybe it's everybody. I I don't know what everybody does, so I I wouldn't. I'm not the person to be the judge of that. But I know there's a lot of people here who do different jobs and who have, probably have to be here to deal with permits and licenses and all the stuff that, that the city has to continue to do. Um, and, and so in whatever way we do it, those people are gonna have to be here from time to time to do their jobs. So that was, a, that was just my suggestion is that we go through the, the process of at least giving those to people so they have something to do. That identifies them as essential from the city's from the perspective of the council. Are we a small enough staff where we could claim everyone is essential? I talked to Angie this morning. Um, the mayor had asked that I maybe touch base with her a little bit. Angie is our union rep. And her comments that the kind of unions take on everything is to, the goal is to keep everyone paid and safe, to protect employees, to have the ability to do social distancing, and if at all possible, work from home. Um, department heads in most government unities, entities are determining who is essential to their department. And she said that the unions take as all department heads are essential. Um, when she looks at a community our size or a city our size, she believes there is a good argument that each employee would be essential because like in the example of the public works department, you know, maybe a bigger city that has 20 public works employees, they could determine that part of them are, part of them are not. But where we have so, so few of employees, they're probably all quite essential. They all do different items that aren't always cross-trained. And in the um, event that maybe we have an employee that would not be considered essential compared to the governor's orders, they could cross train to do transcription for the police department. They could cross train to help Tom in his current role or cross train to help the liquor store where they're potentially going to be quite busy. 
Yeah, that was one thing that, that I was thinking of is that, you know, due, due to our size and, and most employees, if they haven't formally been cross-trained, they have been, uh, you know, enough exposure where they could do certain things. I'm not sure about transcribing in the police department. That could be... Um, we, we, talk, we actually talked about this, and the transcription part might not be an issue. Okay. Um, most anything else could be an yeah. issue. Okay. Um, but just doing the transcription because it's just literally typing up what others are saying shouldn't be that that big of a problem because they're not um, they're not getting any of that real you know any of that criminal justice data. They're just listening to uh, what somebody's saying and typing it out. Okay. And um, and the uh, the fact that we just authorized cross training. Um, among departments, I think, uh, opens up the uh, the door to everybody being um, listed as essential. And uh, if you do get to the point where, you know, if we do have to, um, if somebody gets diagnosed and, and can't come in, we have somebody that's already, you know, essential and that can be called in at a, you know, a moment's notice. But uh, but my leaning anyway is that uh, when is it a time where we start splitting people up so well, not everybody's here at the same time all, every day? A lot of companies I'm working with, half of them aren't working. So they can come in if the other half gets sick or vice versa. You have everybody working here regardless if somebody gets it. Then the city hall is shut down. <clears throat> Where's the line where the department heads pick out Okay, you three, we're going to lay you off. And these three, you're going to lay you off. In two weeks, we're going to swap. One thing Angie had said some of the bigger entities were doing is they would have part of their employees work Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and part Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Um, you know, whether that works or not, because I don't know that there's a determination as how long a, the virus lives on hard surfaces. So if somebody comes in infected Monday, they could potentially expose people that come in Tuesday. Um, part of our thing is, is you know, Jennifer has her specialty items that she does, and if Jody and Melinda, which they cannot do any dealer work or any motor vehicle work after 4.30 today, um, if they don't have essential in their department, potentially they could help Jennifer, but if she's not here to give them direction, that would be hard to do. You know, um, with cleaning the administrator office, that is the first thing I thought of that they may be able to really key in on where we haven't changed the length of time before we have, um, hire an administrator, but Jen and I have to look at everything they go through to determine it, it, what file it goes in or if it can be shredded or if it's duplicates, because they aren't going to know that without our assistance. But they have the time potentially to go in there. We don't right now. And, and my understanding is that even if they are deemed or declared essential, mm -hmm. they do not have to be here. They can still, supervisors can still um, send people home or schedule accordingly, correct? Mm -hmm. If we had anyone, and if there is, I, I'm not interested in names, but anyone who's expressed a desire to not be here no. until this is over? No. Not in, not in the admin girls. Mm -hmm. They all want to work. Neil? Can, uh, can we spread out as much as possible? Like now the small conference room isn't used. Somebody could almost that's Tom's office. That's Tom's office. Oh, okay. No, it is being used. Okay. But I think spreading out as far as possible is important. Uh, one thing like the public works, maybe have the lunch breaks in the, the big shop and spread out more. Yes. Stay, stay your six or eight foot distance throughout the day if you can. You know, if somebody's running the sweeper, they're definitely by themselves or running more, but if we can, trimming a tree right now probably wouldn't be a good idea. No, some of those things obviously will be avoided. Well, I'll move to classify all city employees as essential, but direct department heads to investigate whether or not appropriate social distancing can be accomplished and pursue a possible rotating schedule. I'll second. Motion by Rinky, seconded by LeBeau, correct? It's hard to hear when we're all yeah. spread out now. <clears throat> to uh, um, 
deem all city employees as essential, but give the uh, or direct the supervisors, the department heads, to look at rotating schedule basically and and uh, use their judgment in scheduling. Is that kind of basically it? I'm sure Jennifer got it written down, but I'm just trying to phrase it. To deem all um, city employees as essential, and supervisors and department heads um, the authority to. Um, Pursue social distancing mm -hmm. and rotating schedules if necessary. Yep. Okay, are we clear? Any discussion? Would that also include um, allowing department heads to let employees work from home if that works? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, all in favor, aye. Right? Oh, that's aye. a question. Aye. Oh, Ron, oh, yeah. I guess the mm -hmm. other point on there yep. would be the next item is does that also include part timers then? Because I guess at this time of year, as long normally we call them mm -hmm. back. Um, part of this is, um, I don't know if you're aware, but the library systems, the Department of Education has asked that all libraries uh, help with the distance learning. Uh, I was contacted by the regional director here. That is very likely going to happen. Um, so they will be having curbside pickup mm -hmm. with the library. So if they're going to be staffed, we will have to obviously get in there and clean also. So, I think yes, it would have to. I mean, I, I think. Okay. Yep. I, I would agree too because if you do have to send somebody home for whatever, then we've already designated everybody as essential. Is that in your understanding? And the yep. part time. Part timers there. Yep. Okay, we're clear on that now. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? None. That did carry. All right. Um, public works employees, since we're talking about those, and since it's next on the agenda. Ron, anything more? And no, then, no, <coughs> right there. okay, and then but your new hire? Yes. Um, did we want to keep proceeding with that, or did we want to push that off a couple of weeks till this passes? And What's your need? At this point, I guess we would have enough on staff to get us through this next couple of weeks. I mean, if we push it back another two weeks, I can get that. <laughs> have you got? I'll want to, applicants that we have to start looking elsewhere either. I, I think we should go ahead with the, if we have some good applicants, uh, to go ahead and get a finalist, but maybe you don't start until May 1st or May 15th instead of, I think we should, we should go ahead with the hiring. Yes, to keep the process going, but tell them to start date, maybe push back. Mm -hmm. yeah look at video interviewing if possible or something like that. Sure. Did yeah. get a call, you got a call too, about someone that had just gotten laid off that had missed the date to to apply. Um, not sure if we want to go there or what they were asking, if it would still potentially be open to apply. Your thoughts? I think we need to follow, you know, somebody called in and said that they had uh, missed the date, the deadline for submitting applications was the 25th, I believe, mm -hmm. and they wanted to bring in their application today. Uh, I guess maybe Bill could help answer that if we would accept it, or? I think, I think it's hard to vary from your advertisement if you mm -hmm. set a deadline. I, I, my recommendation would be okay. not to unless you want to just restart the whole process. Mm -hmm. I think you'd have to restart it in order to be able to do that. Yep. Just thought I'd bring it up. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I shouldn't need a motion then because it's already in process and uh, been approved. We'll look forward to uh, new hire then. Nothing else on employees? Then the next question about our meeting on the 30th, which we had uh, declared as a normal, <laughs> normal for the next couple of weeks, Monday, 1145 meeting. Do we still want to meet on Monday? Jeff, the only, the only thing, I, I did get some correspondence on our uh, ongoing negotiations to settle the claim mm -hmm. uh, that we've been discussing in closed sessions from time to time. I don't know, I mean, I don't, I, I don't think that it's uh, imperative that we do that on Monday. I think it could wait. And you probably have a meeting tentatively scheduled for the following Monday. Yep. 
and that would be plenty soon enough, and then we could That's, properly notice it. That would have to be. I was just going to ask yeah. that they have to be, you know, a, a separate notice, and would On probably it should be an agenda item yeah. and show it. I think mm -hmm. it would be. So I would, unless there's something that the council needs I, uh, to do Monday. Mm -hmm. now, that's the only thing that I just got something this morning on that. Just okay. want to make you aware of it. Tom, you foresee anything between now and Monday why we would need to meet? I don't think so. No. We've already talked about any changes for the social distancing, which would, you know, the Minnesota one would take precedent anyway. It's going to be in the news anyways, and I think yeah. all of us are staying pretty surprised at what's going on. So, Bill, are you thinking that you would want to have that closed session on the 6th at 11.45 or on the 13th at the normal council meeting? If the council's going to meet on the 6th, I'd just as soon get to it, but I would defer what the council wants to do on it. I think we should get it done, keep that moving forward. I didn't mean anybody else. Yeah. Yeah. How much notice time do we have to have in canceling a meeting on Monday? I was wondering if something did come up over the weekend, move forward, but otherwise cancel it at 11 if nothing did. I'm not aware of any notice requirements for cancellation. Mm -hmm. um, I think the only notice requirements are for setting. So mm -hmm. if you wanted to cancel it on Monday morning, I think okay. I'm, I'm not aware of anything that would prohibit you from doing that. So if nobody shows up at 11.44. So then I would still publish an agenda today. Okay. And maybe we can look at, you know, typically department has to do that staff meeting on Monday morning. You know, if there's anything that we decided that that would happen, then it's council, but I'd say after that staff meeting, we can try to cancel if we don't feel a need for it. Okay. If that works. Okay. That makes sense. Yep. And then I know we talked um, at our council meeting on Monday about board, continuing with board meetings and stuff. Um, is that in light of the stay home um, executive order, are we still continuing with that and just probably doing more of the video or conference in? We're set up video and like the library is set to meet and... They are and I sent out, I had Jen, Jen sent out an email for me that said, you know, do you want to meet in person or in phone? So I want to make sure I had a quorum because Leo Lewis wanted to be invited to that meeting. Mm -hmm. I do have a quorum and of that quorum, I think actually six of the seven voting members have responded. Um, two of them are going to do by phone. I think one is a distance away, so it just worked out for her that she could do it by phone and the other one due to health. Um, the other ones have all said they will meet in person since we're set up. Okay. Split apart here. And Mr. Lewis will also be coming to that meeting, it sounds like. And I think we have actually four meetings yeah. this week. So. Mm -hmm. Work of the city does still go on. Correct. Anything else? Thank you all. We're adjourned. <coughs>